working on rightly applying the word of Yahuwah. We are working on rightly applying the word of Yahuwah. And so, Shahul had been summoned uh, because he is the subject of great debate in these, these last days. And it's absolutely nothing new. The scriptures themselves let us know that it's nothing new. Shahul have always been a subject of great debate. And the text also tell us, you see, if you, if you discredit Shahul without examining, proving, testing, then you have to discredit the other, the other writers of the renewed covenant. Some people have made it to that point. Some people have not gotten there yet. Some people have, after discrediting Shahul, they have gotten to the point of discrediting also the other writers in the renewed covenant. Because, and the reason why is it because they realize you cannot discredit Shahul and not discredit the other writers because the other writers also testify of Shahul. They, they, they speak of, they affirm the things that Shahul says. And when individuals realize this, they say, oh, the entire renewed covenant is false. No. It's important to understand that while the renewed covenant, as a matter of fact, not just the renewed covenant. People like to say that the renewed covenant or what they call the, the New Testament is, is, is flawed. But listen, don't stop there. The book that we have is called the Bible. It was named after a pagan deity and a lawless man. The whole book is flawed. doesn't stop with the renewed covenant. The whole entire thing is flawed. But some will cut out one part of it and say this is good, but that is bad. I'm going to keep this part and throw it. No, that, 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 is, that is not wise. Because the same people that gave you the part that you cut out also gave you the part that you're keeping. You see? So the whole book is flawed. The entire book is flawed. Now, how do we know what is flawed and what is not? That can only come through true dedication to studying the word. You see, if you take truth and you surround it with a bunch of lies, truth cannot be buried for too long. It's going to rise to the top. You stick with it long enough and it's gonna, you're going to begin to see the difference between what is fact and what is fiction. You see, when a person lies... You run into a person that's a liar. Um, if you have a brief conversation with them, you probably won't be able to tell. But if you talk to them long enough, even, if, even when they're telling you a bit of truth, you're going to recognize that this person is a liar. You see? So time reveals all things. You see? Time reveals all things. Okay? So in the same way with the scriptures, when we study the scriptures... How do we begin to recognize where the errors are and where the willful lies are placed? We recognize it because we dedicate ourselves to really searching the scriptures. Truth bears witness to itself. It does not bear witness to lies. And so where there are lies mixed with truth, eventually the lie is going to be exposed. Okay, now, as we enter here into the book of Romans chapter 1, there is something else that I want to also encourage us to keep in mind when it comes to the writings. Be aware of the word but. Beware of the word but. Beware of the word but. I'm going to write it. But. But. Beware of the word but. Why is that little word so... So um, important as we read the writings. Why is it so important? Um, a while ago, I, I wrote uh, I wrote a um, I wrote a uh, little note on Facebook titled "Get Your Butt Out the Way." Okay, get your butt out the way. Get your butt out the way. The lawless ones love the word but. The lawless ones love the word but. So I'm going to caution you.
to be aware of the word but. Be aware of your word, the word but. Get your but out the way. You see, uh, the word but is used to bring, to draw negative contrast. It is a conjunction used to draw negative contrast. Okay? It is a conjunction used to draw negative contrast, the word but. So, what you're doing is, what you're doing when you're using the word but is you're making a comparison of two things. You're making a comparison of two things. But when you use the word but, it is saying that one thing is either better than or greater than the other. Or one thing was, but no, it is not, and it has been replaced by something else. So the word but is used to draw negative contrast. And we find this all throughout the translation, the word but. Even though, in some cases, it, it, listen, we do not have the original text of the Renewed Covenant. Okay? Um, and the text of uh, Torah and the Prophets, um, while I call them the original text, I don't speak of them being original in the sense that it was the very first text that was written. They have been replicated by those responsible for that, the scribes. That was their responsibility to replicate this, the text. And, and they have always done that. For thousands of years it has been done. Okay? And so, um, when I say concerning Torah and the prophets, when I speak of the original writings, the original text, I'm speaking of a replication of the text. Okay? Now, we can know, again, from the, in, in the scriptures, what have been tampered with and one, what have not been, based on our study, because... That's why Yahuwah tells us study line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, rightly applying the word of truth. You see? When, it, when you bring it all together, it's got to make sense. If it doesn't make sense when you bring it together, something is wrong. And somebody is to be blamed, but certainly not Yahuwah. Okay? So be aware of the word but. I'm going to give you one example of the word but, how it is used, before we go to the book of Romans, because they certainly use it in the book of Romans also. Um to imply something that is not stated, okay? They also use it there in the book of Romans. So, But before we go to the book of Romans, let's go to the book of Yahukanan is one place where I like to point out they use it because it's very plain in this place. It's easy to see in this place, and hopefully when we see it in this place, then we can recognize it very easily when we see it in other places. Okay, so in the book of Yahukanan, chapter 1 and verse 17 as a matter of fact I'll just read from verse 16 has nothing to, well just read from verse 16 you know um, but it says and out of his completeness we all did receive we all did receive and favor upon favor we all did receive favor upon favor now verse 17. For the Torah was given through Masha. Uh, wait, I'm reading from the Bashura. At least in the Bashura, they did make this change. <laughs> I need to read from a different translation. Okay, can somebody post that verse from another translation, King James or any other lawless translation? Um, verse 17. Um, I'm, I'm, I forgot I'm looking at the Bash Bashura here. And at least that's one place where they did make a correct change in, 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 in Bashura. Thank you, Aki. So in verse 17 it says, For the law was given by Masha, and they say Moses, of course, right? Now see that word, but, but, and they have grace. The word is not grace, should be favor. Grace and favor is not the same thing, okay? Um, the word grace actually have pagan roots, not because it's an English word, but because it does have pagan roots okay so the, for the law was given by Masha but favor and truth came by Yahusha HaMashiach what is this verse saying what is this verse saying if I could get a little bit of feedback um, on the verse what is this verse saying whether you want to type it or if somebody want to come to the mic 
Uh, I'd like to get a little bit of feedback. Absolutely. Yeah. The law was, was then, and now we have grace. Grace and truth trump Torah. Mm-hmm. Grace and truth is elevated. Or grace and truth is better than Torah. Right? So, uh, or the law was then, but now we have grace and truth. All of that. All of that was stated. It's drawing a line. Absolutely. You see? So the but is drawing a line. It is casting a negative shadow on the thing that is behind it. The but is casting a negative shadow on the thing that is behind it. You see? Now, normally our butts can do that, right? You stand sideways in the sun, and because your butt protrudes a little bit from the rest of your body, it does cast a shadow. Well, in this, in this case, it does the same thing. It casts a negative shadow on the thing that is behind it. Okay? Because for it to cast a shadow, it's got to be standing um, in between the light and the object behind it. In this situation, the butt is standing between Torah and favor and truth. And it casts a negative shadow on Torah. The butt does not belong. Yup, I am black, but calmly. It cast a negative shadow on black, you see, which of which black was never even really the definition, the way of defining a person's skin color. That only came about in the 1960s, okay? Um, so the butt cast a negative shadow, and when these people translate the text, they know precisely what they wanted to communicate, and they communicated it. What we have got to learn through the study of the scriptures is we have got to learn to spot the evil. We have got to learn to spot the wickedness. And that is what is messing a whole lot of people up. You see, they don't, they don't spot the evil they, because they're reading the scriptures in their flesh. They're not seeking Yahuwah. His Ruach is not guiding them. They're reading the scriptures like they're reading a novel. And somehow think that you can understand spiritual things through, cor through carnal methods. You cannot. It messes you up every time. Okay? So watch out for the word but. And tell them translators, get your butt out the way. Okay. All right. So we're going now to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And uh, family... As we, go, as we go to this passage, from the door, uh, you're going to see that we're going to be hit with some hard stuff, some, some tough subjects. When you think about all the doctrines that's floating around today, you're going to be hit with some, th with some tough subject. Praise Father Akut. Praise Yahuwah. Okay. Now, Romans chapter 1. Beginning at verse 1. We'd like to say Shabbat Shalom to, uh, to you, Aki Lola Hart. Also to Aki Daniyahu and also to Torah Ben Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom to you. Shabbat Shalom also to Mokali. I'm sorry I um, forgot to greet you guys sooner. Shabbat Shalom. Great to see you. Okay. Now, Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Shahul, a servant uh, of... I'm reading from Bashura. Okay. Uh, we see that the word... It's really not Besora, it's really Bashura, Bashura. Of course, we know that where you find the word gospel, that gospel does not belong. We looked at that the la last week, that gospel means the spell of God. Okay? We're not under a spell of God. Okay? Um, so, uh, 1309, 1309, 1309. Thank you. Okay, so that's Bashura, Bashura, Bashura. So when you see Besura, okay, thirteen eighteen, that the same, or oh, the root, okay. When you see Besura, that is. It, it, not uh, not pure Yiddish, but Yiddish influence, okay? 
And the reason why I, I say not pure Yiddish, <laughs> the language is Yiddish. But when you say that, people are quick to say, oh, um, modern Hebrew is not Yiddish. Well, yes, it is. It's just a, a newer form of Yiddish, it, you know. The language, the, the, the invention evolved, okay? Um, yeah, so, um, and the, 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 the S that we see there is not the Samak, but the Shan. So um, it's, uh, you know, it would have the SH. Um, I don't know if the root, maybe the root is Samak, but um, no, it should be the Shan also and not the Samak. So either way, okay, to bear tidings, good news, okay? All right, so yeah, so Bashura. So when we see the book Besora, that comes from the Yiddish root, not from the Abri root. Okay. Okay, so we're going to um, chapter 1 now of Romans. Romans chapter 1, and it says, Shahu, Shahu, a slave of Yahusha, Hamashiach, a called, and we looked the other day at the word apostle okay we looked at that word the other day um, but okay I called emissary or ambassador representative messenger separated to the Bashura of Alekin okay so Shahul announces himself this is his introduction my name is Shahul I am a slave of Yahusha HaMashiach a called ambassador, emissary, servant, messenger, separated to Bashura, to the Bashura of Alahim. And that is what we are, family. All of us are this, okay? We are a slave of Yahusha HaMashiach. We are a called emissary, messenger, servant, ambassador, Separated to the Bashura of Alayim. We have been separated. We have been set apart unto Yahuwah to proclaim his good news. How do we proclaim his good news? We proclaim his good news by our life, the way we live, the word we, words we speak, the decisions that we make. My wife, her cousin had invited her to a, a barbecue on the Shabbat. She turned it down. Her sister invited her to a birthday party, to her birthday party on Shabbat. She turned it down. Now, she knows you don't get involved with the whole birthday party thing and, uh, and Shabbat thing. Now, there was a time when they had, invi they had something on Shabbat, and they invited my wife. And uh, before Shabbat ended, she went and... You know, it's evident that they what they did was they made a mockery of her. Well, the, the, the first test she failed. The second time the test came and they invited her, second and third time the test came, she passed. She turned it down. Well, um, this morning, her aunt called her, and she, she her aunt was not a believer. She's a Jehovah Witness. She called her and said, you know, I just want you to know that, um, and I'm going to paraphrase, I don't remember the exact words. She explained to her that because the first party that she was invited to on Shabbat, the barbecue she was invited to on Shabbat, was this aunt's daughter's barbecue. And uh, uh, I guess they felt as if, well, she didn't come because, you know, uh, it's, it's just a cousin. Well, when her sister had her birthday party on Shabbat and invited her, they went, the cousins went, but my wife still didn't go. So when they saw that, they saw that, oh, it's not just because, um, you know, it's a cousin thing. But she actually didn't show up to her own sister's stuff either, you see. Yes, they do. They do. It, it, well, they're going to do that, Akut. <laughs> That's what lawless people do. They try to trip us up so they can laugh at us, you know. Because as far as they're concerned, what we're doing is a fairy tale. You know, so when, when they saw that she didn't show up to her own sister's um, party on Shabbat, 
or even if it wasn't going to be Shabbat, she wasn't going to show up. But when they saw that, they said, oh, okay, so uh, it wasn't just a cousin thing. She's really serious about what she's, in their words, into, the way they think. She's really serious about what she's into. So she called this morning to say, you know, um, say to my wife, I really admire your stance. I really admire the stand that you take for what you believe in, you know. Um, so she called to say that. Now, if my wife had... If my wife had um, uh, compromised and gone ahead, then she would have just been uh, the talk among them, you know. They're the ones that invited her, but she would be the hypocrite. So we are proclaimers of the good news, both in our decisions, in what we say, and in what we do, you see. We are proclaimers of the good news. We are ambassadors, okay. Now, in verse um, verse 2, yes, Yahuwah be esteemed, halal huyah. Now, in verse 2, it says, okay, so Shahul, a slave of Yahusha Mashiach, a called emissary, separated to the Bashura of Alakim, which he promised before through his prophets in the set-apart scriptures, concerning his son, who came of the seed of Dahud, according to the flesh. Oh, now... Verse 2, verse, verse 3, okay, verse 3. Concerning his son who came of the seed of the hood according to the flesh. That brings us to the first controversy that comes out of Shahul. Okay, this brings us to the first controversy, and we're going to look at it. Um... There are people today that, that Yahusha was nothing more than just another man. That Mashiach was just another man. There are people that teach that, people that follow that, people that believe that. There were people in this room that uh, when we began to go into the study on the Akkad of Yahuwah, they held that belief and they didn't stick around to find out, hear anything. They, they just, you know, basically create an uproar and they left and they left believing it and still believe it and is still teaching it okay so here is the first controversy associated with Shahul this verse right here verse 3 concerning his son who came of the seed of the hood according to the flesh they use this verse and let's go to another verse Matit Yahu if you could turn with me to the book of Matit Yahu Matat Yahu chapter 1, the seed of Dahud. Keep that in mind. Concerning his son who came of the seed of Dahud according to the flesh. According to the flesh. So, so Mashiach came out of the seed of Dahud according to the flesh. Okay, the teaching here, the teaching that is stated is that Mashiach, that Yahusaf, who we know as Joseph, that Yahusaf, that there is no Im, uh, what what the Christians call immaculate conception. I don't like the the terminology because it's a Christian terminology, um, immaculate conception. But basically, they believe that um, they believe that Yahusha was not, is not, he is not Yahuwah. And he is not the seed of Yahuwah put in the woman and brought forth. Okay? That he was just another regular little kid like you and I. So they believe that he... Um, you know, babe, could you take that computer and put it on the table in there? Because uh, it can't breathe on that. So, yes. Yeah, so they believe that he was just another natural man nothing sim nothing special about him he was just another natural man and uh, for those who have not discredited Shahul they'll go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 3 those who have not totally discredited Shahul they'll go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 3 to say this they'll also go to Mathat Yahu chapter 1 and I believe let me find it verse 20 or so Matat Yahu chapter 1, 
verse 20. We're going to talk about what all that means. If Yahusha was just a regular person like you and I, what does that mean? What does that mean? What are we believing if that is what we believe?